Hello everyone and welcome to Additional Clinics. We are back on our console and today we are going to see a very interesting case that we managed recently. And as always, you will see the scan first and you will have to identify the phase, the pathology, what is your probable diagnosis and then what is your management plan. So this is basically what we do in this Correlate Clinically series. So I'm sure by now most of you have got the heck of it. The face, the pathology, what do you feel is the diagnosis based on the features that you will see on imaging. And then you decide management. So I'm sure by now most of you have guessed the pathology at least. But once you have identified it, you have to decide what it is and what can be the possible management plan. Also look at the variations. As you know, in most of our discussion, you have seen that the variations are way more common than we will anticipate and they definitely affect the surgical management. Looking at the next axial cuts, You can see a lot of problems in this patient. Just to give a brief history, this is a young female, 22-year-old, who presented with abdominal pain, a palpable lump, and early satiety. No other complaints. A sonography was done, followed by a scan. So this is the scan that we did. You can see some pathologies. If you want a coronal section, then this is the coronal section. Again, identify the phase, identify the branches. See if you can identify structures of importance. So this was the first axial series that you saw. This is an arterial phase image. You can see the aorta is white. By now you know that how to identify the different phases. If not, we have a lot of videos on basics of scan. So you can have a look at that. You can see the anatomy. This is the celiac artery, the common hepatic artery and the splenic artery. And the hepatic arterial anatomy is normal. So that is something that we have to see. Another important structure that you have to see here is the gastroduodenal artery. So this is the gastroduodenal artery. And you can see that it is cutting the tumor. So gastroduodenal artery. And you can see that it is skirting and entering the tumor. There's the gastroepiploid, the gastroduodenal artery. You can trace it nicely okay and then coming into the common hepatic so that's the gastroduodenal artery important when we plan surgery for this patient because it is curtain at one edge of the tumor so gastroduodenal artery is going to get rejected this is the unseen part of the pancreas you can see that it is relatively free from the tumor but there is an area where unseen it is involved or compressed probably by the tumor. Like I said, this is a young girl and most common tumor that presents in this age group is a spen or a solid pseudopapillary epithelial neoplasm. So you can see the part of pancreas that may be saved in this surgery. There are tumors that are going right up to the uncinate of the pancreas. So that is something that you have to see. So this part of the pancreas is what we may be able to save if this patient's plan for surgery. Another structure that you have to see is the supermesentric artery. This is the supermesentric artery. You can see that it is free from the tumor. There is a plane between supermesentric artery and the tumor. So at least the supermesentric artery is free. Now, going 
now going to the portal venous phase and a lot of findings here. You can see a lot of collaterals in the splenic vein territory. So the patient has splenic vein thrombosis, varices in this area. All these need to be ligated when you operate this patient. So all the varices will need to be ligated. The portal vein and its relation to the tumor, it seems to be compressed in this area. Usually the spans don't invade the portal vein, they compress the portal vein and you can see the portal vein going towards the liver. So there is an area where the vein is compressed. You have to be ready for a recon if the vein is involved when you are operating this patient. Now spans usually will present on one of the two sides. It will be on the left of the portal SMV junction. Then we do a distal pancreatectomy. If it's on the right, then you do a Whipple probably or a central pancreatectomy. But here, if you can see beyond the tumor, there is no pancreas. The pancreas is getting over. So most of the pancreas is involved by the tumor. And there is splenic vein thrombosis. This is the renal vein. You can see a lot of collaterals in the area. The left gastric vein is seen very nicely here. And it will be important to preserve the left gastric vein if possible while ligating all the collaterals because there will be some area of drainage of stomach that will go through the left gastric vein because the gastroduodenal is involved. The left gastric pedicle becomes very important to preserve the blood supply of the stomach. So as the gastroduodenal artery is involved, when we reject this tumor, most of the drainage of stomach will be through left gastric. Because there are so many collaterals in the splenic area, this patient will need a splenectomy when a surgery is being planned. So a splenectomy devas probably of the stomach with preserving the blood supply of stomach through the left gastric complete removal of the tumor with a margin and attempt to save the duodenopancreatic uh, junction as well as part of uncinate of the pancreas. You can see here that the stom stomach and the duodenum is abutting the tumor. Can we separate it from the tumor? You'll come to know only intraoperatively. So we had seen the coronal section. So just a review, you can again see the left gastric vein, a lot of collaterals. The spleen is slightly enlarged and the entire tumor. If you can see the portal vein, you can see that it's opening up. So these tumors usually compress the portal vein and it can be separated. So this patient underwent a surgery turned out to be a span and we could save the duodenum as well as part of the pancreas. So did not need a total pancreatectomy, but needed a near total or what we can say only the uncinate and a part of it of pancreas with the ampulla was preserved. The patient's doing fine on follow-up. So scan reading is very important. You have to see all these structures on console, have venous and arterial recons if you want for these kind of cases and then do a surgery based on the planning that is done on the scan. Thank you.